Okay, um, new little video. A lot of people have been saying that they uh, like uh, the videos that I've been doing, so I have to excuse a little bit. Have a, a little bit of a cold, <clears throat> but uh, it's just in the throat. I don't know exactly what it was, but uh, I think I had a few days of fever without even realizing I had fever. But anyway, uh, so I'll be drinking uh, tea in between. But um, today, actually, this is one of the things, and I don't have the flu. Don't be worried. <laughs> It's pretty much more cold. Um, I want to talk about a subject that in the last few weeks I've been seeing that uh, people have kind of mis misconception. And uh, we'll try to uh, show, show you the way. <laughs> no, but show you my, uh, my perspective on it and based on what, what I read and stuff. And uh, down you'll see a few links. Uh, the first one is actually a pretty good... Uh, condense a resume of what I'll be talking about. The second one is a paper that explains a little bit the, the risk of, uh, well, not the risk, well, yeah, the risk of giving um, antipyretic uh, to some, some kind of, some patients. So, um, and again, it's not to scare everybody off and everything, but it's just to be more informed uh, in form of what we're doing and why we're doing it. So the re so uh, it will be kind of two videos, but it's actually one video. So this one will be on high temperature, and you'll see why I'm talking about high temperature, not fever. And the second one will be on sepsis, and that will be uh, following right after that. So fever, uh, <clears throat> high temperature. Why am I saying high temperature? Um, so. We talk about, and this is why sepsis and, and that part will be kind of, so we've learned that black, we've learned that in sepsis, we need to recognize the sign of Sears, so systemic inflammatory response uh, syndrome. And why is it important? It's because Earlier in sepsis, and again, I'll talk to about it a bit more, but I want to kind of introduce uh, to my subject because of this. Higher you, um, uh, earlier you start treating your sepsis at the Sears level, the better chance you have of reversing it. But Sears is not sepsis, it's different. And Sears is important because with sears you can have high temperature do not mean that you will have an infection so let's repeat that sears do not mean that you have an infection means that you have an inflammatory process going on why am i talking about frenchy <laughs> so let's take let's take a few examples to see what i'm trying to get to we have three patients. Yeah, they all do. Okay. So, all the same age. How about that? A 20 year old, 20 year old, 20 year old. All male. So, patient one, 20 year old male that uh, was involved in a uh, car accident about six hours ago. Uh, B, a 20-year-old male with, um, yeah, sting, um, sting by a bee. One hour ago, when you're on mail, coughing, uh, coughing, sore throat, you know, you know the drill, uh, times three days. You go and take your vitals. Thirty-eight one. 
That's, we'll just talk about temperature for now. So 38.1, because this is the main uh, topic of the temperature. So 38.1. Um, are you going to do full culture and everything on all of three of them? I cannot hear your answer, but I hope it was no. But why do they have a high temperature? Or how come they're, uh, they're, uh, they have a high, uh, yeah, a high temperature? Not a fever, high temperature. Sears. So our body is an intelligent, stupid machine. It has one way and one way only to respond to pretty much everything else that happens. Six hours ago doesn't give much chance of having an infection kicking in. It takes about one or two or three days before you can have the colonization enough to get to that point. So if I have, but if I have a trauma, so I hit myself, I bleeding internally, whatever, my body responds the same way. It releases some stuff, it, it creates it, it interleukin and the um, white blood count cells and, and rush stuff and everything. And this is why we have this. And that's why we have Sears. That means that your heart rate will go up because we're rushing everything. And we'll talk a little bit more about it in, in sepsis. I don't want to get too much about it, but, uh, but we're rushing all our, our troops to the front. So that's why they'll have a temperature, but it is not an infection. It is a response inflammatory process. Same thing with the sting B. Body is responding to something, boom, go up, but it's not an infection. It's a high temperature. I have this one now, three days coughing and everything. That is what we all call here a fever. It is an infection. It is most likely an infection, mostly in his lungs. Therefore, his temperature is related to an infection. That means he's right now, as this one, not sepsis, not sepsis, and if he would meet the other criteria of Sears plus infection, sepsis. So it means infection, that means sepsis. So that means this temperature is probably related to his infection. Again, because of this systemic inflammatory response. Let's take now case number four. Again, 28 year old, party dude. And he thought that for his, new, for his birthday, it would be nice to play with Matt. Crystal net. Got a temperature of 38.1. So case number three, we said infection. In case number four, he's taking drugs. Why I bring those two is that who would you give? Who would be more worried about? So if you have the one patient, obviously we'll be concerned about both of them, but which one would be more worried about? So this one, it is not fever, it's not high temperature, this is hyperthermia. And hyperthermia is way different than fever. Why? In our little brain of ours, we have a little center. And I'll show And in that little place in our brain, what it does, it decides how we gonna play with our temperature. When we have a, a fever, so we're, we're talking about fever at this point, this is why the body tries to raise our body. We shiver. When do we always, all, all, uh, when do you, we also shiver? In hypothermia. Why are we shivering in hypothermia? To create heat. 
Why? To keep our body to a certain temperature so that we can survive. In a fever, this is pretty much the same reason we're trying to. We shiver so that we can create higher temperature so that we can kill as many bugs as we can with our own body. Bugs don't survive very well in a high temperature. That's why when we want to uh, pur uh, purify our water or something like this, we boil our water. That's why we, when we want to sterilize instrument, we do it at a high temperature. They don't survive very well in a high temperature. So that's why our body tries to raise this temperature by sending all kind of message and sense to this little place in our brain. And by doing that, our body will respond. We'll try to do the chills and everything. But also, our body is that intelligent, stupid machine, but it's not that stupid, that will let us go to a dangerous place. So what it's going to do is going to kind of monitor it. So if you are, if you have a cold, a flu or something and you have chills, please, 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 please give them a warm blanket. They will not die of hyperthermia. It's a different process and it will actually help them. The other thing too, that those patients, until they reach about 38, 7, 38, 8, they don't need Tylenol. Actually, Tylenol, and you'll see in that research, is that can worsen their condition. Why? Because, again, we're impeding on this process that it's going on in our body to try to create that heat so that the, this colonization of, of, of cells are kind of going down. So until they're 37, uh, 38.7, 37.8, why giving Tylenol? Actually, give them warm blanket. It'll be much better. There's exception, though. If you have any head injury or neuro issues, so strokes or anything like this, actually too much high temperature, we want to give, keep them down because it's a lot of work for the, for the brain and um, for all perfusion we try to keep that. The other exceptions in kids with history, with history, not any kid, all the kids, but the kids with history of seizure, in either in their parents or in their um, their other siblings with a history of febrile seizure. Those are the ones that you want to keep the temperature because or else they will have a febrile seizure in front of you. Not that it's a big deal, but you don't want to create all that. But those are the kind of case that you would want to keep the temperature down. So what about this one now? What can we do for this one? This one is hyperthermia. Um, uh, heat strokes, uh, heat exhaustion, drugs, all this can induce those ones, those are the ones that you want ice on them, you want water uh, a blanket, you want to cool them down because they cannot cool themselves down themselves. They cannot do it. And giving Tylenol to those is useless. It pretty much won't work because it's a different system in our body. Because basically when we give Tylenol, what it does is it plays on that little part of our brain and kind of say, hey, slow it down. But those guys, what it did is they lost that contact because the drugs or whatever uh, the environment outside has went out uh, to that little place in our brain and kind of shut it down. So they, can't, they cannot cool down. So when you're in hyperthermia, you need to cool them, ice, uh, put the put the uh, blanket uh, water on it. You want to cool their temperature like crazy because they will go up and up, and you want to monitor their their temperature almost every 15 minutes because you want to be sure that they don't go up too much. Even if you can actually monitor it constantly, would be even better. But those are real danger. This one, not a danger. This one, you don't have to do, and if you have a choice between, for example, a sepsis patient and you have someone between, uh, and you have a choice to go grab the Tylenol or the antibiotic, go grab the antibiotic. You don't need the Tylenol. The antibiotic, yes, you need to do it, to give it so that you can stop the process of the sears. But I wanted to give a little something like this to kind of do for you, and hopefully you, uh, you'll enjoy the links down, and we'll talk to you soon.